Yeah. Hi there, this is James Gordon from the TRU Sustainability Office. Uh, many people have asked how our composting program works because we've had it up and running for a couple of years. So I thought I'd take you on a little tour of our facility. This is a temporary facility. Uh, we are planning to build a fully functioning insulated uh, uh, facility closer to the campus activity center where we get a lot of our food waste. So come on inside and I'll show you around. So first of all you'll see we've got our wood pellets here. This is just straight wood. Uh, same pellets you'd use in a wood stove. There's no additives to it. It's either basically pine, fir, or spruce. So this is Tom, named after the first director of the office. And we've got a second one over here, but we haven't named that one yet. So basically there are five components to composting. First thing is the nitrogen rich material. So we've got kitchen scraps from the Campus Activity Center kitchen. As I mentioned, the wood pellets, so here they are here. This is your carbon source. So carbon is sort of the dead stuff. You can use wood, leaves, dead grass, straw, hay, dirt, old newspaper. But this machine is designed for the wood pellets, uh, so obviously we're gonna use those. The, other, the next component is air. As you can see here, and once we get this going, you'll get a better view. Uh, we've got these big mixing arms that uh, keep everything oxygenated. The fourth component is moisture. So once in a while, I'll just check it, see how it feels. It should feel like a wrung out sponge when it's, do, when it's working properly. And if it's too dry, you just throw in some water. If it's too wet, you add a few more wood pellets. And the fifth thing is time. So typically, this machine, there's, as you can see, the two chambers. Uh, the first chamber, the material goes into here, stays for roughly two to three weeks. Then there's, an, uh, there's a big screw here we undo. And there's an internal door between the two chambers and it moves over and stays here for another two to three weeks. And then I'll show you what it all uh, looks like when everything's done. So the first, and the, and the beautiful thing about this machine, which by the way is called a Jora 5100, it's made by a company out of Sweden, Jora, is that it chops everything up into little bits. Don't put your hands in. Let me see if I can get a flashlight in here, get a better view of it. So here's the wood pellets coming through that auger and um, right over here. And then as you can see, there's a hole at the very bottom. Once it all gets chopped up, right above my pen, that uh, the material goes into chamber one. Okay, this is the fun part. So you take your hand, now these uh, containers, um, sorry, much bigger. We have about 100 compost collection bins around the campus, either in hallways or in kitchens, kitchenettes, lunchrooms, that sort of thing. And uh, a gentleman goes by three afternoons a week, collects them, brings them here to do all the processing. So all you do, you throw it in. And um, as I said, these chopping blades make the composting process go a lot quicker because if you can chop it into small uniform bits, it just speeds up the process. You could throw an entire uh, pineapple in there or a coconut and it would compost. It would just take a lot longer. So as soon as I close the door, the wood pellets will automatically feed in and then we should get ready to take a look at the first chamber because everything will start mixing up. So here we go. And away she goes. Can you see anything? So it's all automatic. And uh, not only every time that you put material in the chopping chamber do the big paddles start moving, but automatically throughout the day, they do that as well. Just because as I said, uh, keeping oxygen in the mix is very important. So that's about it. So now we're gonna jump ahead four to six weeks. So it's gone through chamber one, it's gone through chamber two, and we're ready to pull it out the back end. So I just have to um, hit a switch here.
and it might take a second, but basically, as you can see, oh, here it comes. Here we have our black gold. So there's little bits of plastic, which is, you know, in a perfect world, you wouldn't, but that's just the way it is. Some people don't uh, put the stuff in the right bins and you get some little contamination. But at the end of the day, it's, it's not gonna do a lot of damage to your uh, garden or wherever you put this. So as you can see, it's a very nice, dark, rich soil. You smell it, it just smells like regular dirt. And we collect it in these bins and then the TRU grounds crew uh, picks it up and they put it all around the campus and so we close the loop we we produce the material the organic material on the campus turn into compost goes back to uh, for, for nutrients and to keep the uh, uh, moisture levels uh, proper around the campus that's all thanks for watching bye